What's up gamers? It's Above, back with another video, this time with the updated Grandmaster Nightfall Guide for Season of the Splicer. I've seen a lot of people struggle with this GM, but with the strats I'll be sharing in this video, we were getting consistent 12 to 15 minute clears. This week's Adept Loot is the long-awaited Azumi Sniper Rifle, along with any Adept mods you've yet to collect. If you find this guide useful, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. Now let's get into it. Starting with my recommended team comp, we ran one Well of Radiance Warlock with Phoenix Protocol, one Chaos Reach Warlock with Geomag Stabilizers, and one Invis Hunter with Omni Oculus. The Prison of Elders and Boss Room Encounters can give teams a lot of issues, but this team comp is built specifically to help you with the most difficult parts of this GM. I recommend that the Well Warlock runs an Empowering Rift, while the Chaos Reach Warlock runs a Healing Rift. The Empowering Rift gives you the ability to insta-kill champions with Izzy and Div, and your Well Warlock will get their Rift back almost instantly due to the perk Benevolent Dawn, meaning they'll always have it available when focusing champions. Well also provides the safety you need in add dense choke points, Chaos Reach helps solidify the boss bake, and Omni Oculus makes deactivating mines in the Prison of Elders encounter significantly easier. Now for weapon loadouts. This is the first season I've ever seen an artifact mod single-handedly dictate the weapon meta the way that Breach and Clear has with Anarchy. But in my honest opinion, I don't think it's the best option here. Three Anarchies is certainly solid for this GM, but I believe two Izanagis and a Divinity is better overall. This combo absolutely bakes champions in the final boss, while Divinity remains the most consistent source of overload stun in the entire game. Your Div user will be running Double Special and rock a primary grenade launcher for Unstop, along with the 7th Seraph Saw for Ad Clear and Warmind Cell Generation. Your two Izanagi users will be running two Anti-Barrier Scouts, as they are the most prominent champion type in this Nightfall. I recommend pairing Izzy with Lasting Impression Rockets for an easy boss bake. Void is the only shield type that makes an appearance in this Nightfall, as long as you kill the boss quickly. As for key armor mods, you'll need Anti-Barrier Scout and Unstoppable GL, while Divinity is your primary overload stun. Your Chaos Reach Warlock will be rocking Surge Detonators as a backup source of overload, while your Hunter will be using Unstoppable Schwarzschild Condenser as a backup source of Unstop from their smokes. This will cover all three champion types that are present in this Nightfall. The Hunter should also be using Special Finisher to keep your team stocked up on special ammo, and Reactive Pulse to give them a powerful overshield when finishing. I also recommend taking Charge and Protective Light for a 50% damage resist when your shields are broken, Rocket Finders and Scabs to help with heavy ammo economy, and Solar Resist and Concussive Dampener to prevent getting one shot by snipers and incoming grenades. Jumping right into the Nightfall, as you enter the first room, throw down an Empowering Rift and apply Div to the Overload Champion directly across from you. This is the only enemy you need to kill in this room, so head left, smoke your teammates, and skip the remaining adds by using the pipes on the left-hand side of the room. Resmoke your team before jumping up, and we're moving on. In the next area, simply keep an eye out for the oncoming trains, and when jumping down, be sure to kill Gerald the Lonely Goblin on the right-hand side. It seems silly to even mention it, but it will absolutely nuke you off your sparrow if left alive. When you reach the jump down, kill the yellow bar goblin, then focus the hydra around the corner to the right. There will also be an unstop at the top of the ramp, so use your smokes or primary GL to stun, and then sauce them. I recommend getting finishers on the two remaining adds before crossing the train tracks. Keep an eye out for the trains as you cross, then take out the barrier in front of you. Use the train track rails on the left hand side to push forward, as there are no adds on this side of the arena. As you jump down, use the explosive barrels to take out the adds in front of you, then focus the unstop. Clear the area, kill the barrier, and we're moving on. The next room contains a Hydra mini boss and two barrier champions. You'll want to stock up on ammo here, so blind the hobs at the back of the room and get finishers as needed. Throw down a well and play the stairs for cover to get a nice head glitch on the Hydra. Step forward slightly to spawn the barrier champions and kill the right one followed by the left. You'll notice that these champs fall over with Izzy and Div in a well, which really speeds up this part of the nightfall. Next, use your Chaos Reach to clear the large wave of oncoming adds, then push up to the stairs on the left hand side. Once you take out all of the yellow bar enemies, Apoctos, the Minotaur boss, will spawn up. Izzy, Div, and Lasting Impression Rockets absolutely bake this guy, so once he dies, the remaining adds will despawn, and we're moving forward. 
The room after the elevator is where you'll want to get as many finishers as possible to stock up for the Prison of Elders encounter. Use blinding and healing nades to your advantage as your hunter performs finishers. This is also where reactive pulse comes in handy as you'll have a powerful overshield the entire time. Then focus the two unstoppable champions in front of you. Once dead, head left and smoke your team to skip the remaining adds. Resmoke in front of this pillar and we're moving on to the Prison of Elders encounter. Teams typically struggle here due to the number of champions you have to kill and the pace that's required to deactivate all three mines within the time limit. However, our strat makes this room a breeze. Start by throwing down a well behind cover when you enter and focus on the overload and on stop first as they have the most potential to cause issues if left alive. Then look right and take out the barrier colossus. The remaining two barrier hobs aren't too difficult to deal with, so clear adds and get finishers on the barriers if needed. When the last enemy dies, the A cap point will activate. And we like to play near the center of the room, you do not want to start defusing the A mine just yet. Adds will start to spawn out of the doors to your right and left, so pop a well and spawn kill the adds out of both doors, then focus the barrier champion to your right. Once dead, focus the unstop that spawns near the B cap point. It is at this point that you can defuse the mine on A. Once the mine is defused, it triggers the spawn of an overload champion on the bridge in front of you. Throw down an empowering rift and insta-kill it. Then have your two warlocks head left to capture B, while your Omnioculus Hunter heads right to solo cap A. This exotic allows you to remain invisible for the duration of the cap point without having to kill a single ad. Once all three mines are defused, head to the platform at the back right hand side of the room to safely bake the Cabal mini boss. Once dead, all of the ads will despawn and you're free to search for ammo before heading to the boss room. The elevator is a bit wonky, so make sure your team staggers their jumps to avoid architecting your teammates. When you reach the bottom of the elevator, throw down an empowering rift and kill the overload champion. Jump down, take out the unstop, then focus on the barrier colossus to your right, as this champion is far more lethal than the hobgoblin. Get a finisher on the final two champions to stock up on ammo for boss DPS, then pop a well behind the pillar on the right near where you entered. Izzy Rocket Hot Swaps absolutely bake this boss. Once you've each shot a couple quad rounds and rockets, have your Chaos Rage pop their super to finish off the remaining health bar, making the Warden of Nothing Grandmaster a GG. If you found this guide useful, a like and subscription would be greatly appreciated. I also stream GM helps at twitch.tv slash above, so feel free to swing on by the stream. That's it from me. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll catch you next time. Peace!